Hey everyone, welcome to our Unshakable podcast. This is episode 31. I'm glad that you decided to join us today here at 12 noon. And it always airs 12 noon on every Wednesday, so make sure that you are uh, connecting to us every week and telling your friends about it. And make sure that you're subscribing again to our channel and also uh, making sure that you have your notifications on so you can see when this thing pops up every week. But we're glad you're here with us today. And I'm just going to go back over some things that we taught in our service this past Sunday. We are uh, on a series called Connect Four. And this past week, we put in the third chip into the Connect Four, which is discover your God-given purpose. So that's such an important principle and truth that all of us need to get a hold of because really why are we here on this planet why are we even existing and i think that's a question that everyone has or has had i think that every person that's out there whether they're saved or lost whether they're a believer in jesus or not they're trying to figure that out hopefully people that come to christ and by this point they're beginning to get some understanding of it but you know here at our church uh, we actually take time to explain that more, teach on that more, and clarify it more so that people can really walk in their God-given purpose because that's where jo- real joy is at. That's where real contentment is at. And I believe that that's just the cry of every person's heart. You know, what's my purpose on this earth? What's my purpose on this planet? So, um, you know, today we're going to go a little bit back into it, not the whole sermon, but give you some highlights Uh, One of the people that we talked about was Gideon on Sunday, and I think Gideon is such a great example of this because he was in a time when Israel was under the oppression of the Midianites and the Malachites. Uh, Israel had sinned, rebelled against God. Israel was not doing what they were supposed to be doing, and as a result, uh, it opened up the door, so to speak, spiritually and naturally for the enemy to come in and really to begin to oppress them. They oppressed them so bad that uh, the Midianites would just strip their land of all of their crops, take all of their animals, especially those that would be beneficial to uh, any type of uh, monetary value or helping them live life. And they became so impoverished that they would hide in caves or hide in holes in the ground. Even what little stuff they had, they were just trying to keep it back from the Midianites still in it. And that's where we have the story of Gideon in Judges chapter 6. And when when the, the angel of the Lord, which is really the appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, uh, he was in this wine press and he was trying to thresh wheat in a wine press, which is the wrong place to be if you're going to be threshing wheat. You need to be out there in an open field where there's a lot of wind so that you can get that wheat up in the air and get the chaff out. But Gideon was in this wine press because he was afraid. He was afraid like everybody else was. He was hiding and uh, he didn't want the, the Midianites to get the little bit of stuff that he had. Maybe that was for his family. Uh, maybe it was for himself. I don't know. But it was just a little bit that he had and he was hiding it from the Midianites. The Lord appears to him and, and God changes everything by that encounter because God has a different perspective of our lives than we do. God sees the end from the beginning, and God sees who we really are on the inside, and he sees even past our past and present conditions. And so this is what Jesus did as he appeared to Gideon there at the wine press. He began to speak to Gideon about who he was. He began to identify him, and he, and he said to him in Judges uh, chapter 6, and verse around verse 11 or 12, and he says, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of fearless courage. Now, now think about what God's saying to Gideon. He's calling him a mighty man. I'm sure Gideon didn't feel like a mighty man. In fact, he even said he didn't. He said, I am the least of my father's house. And he's probably saying, look at me, I'm over here hiding in this wine press. How can you call me a mighty man? But as well, he called him a man of fearless courage. This is Jesus seeing beyond his present condition. This is Jesus seeing who Gideon really is, who he made him to be. And I really believe this speaks to us because many times our current condition can really blind us or hide to us the purpose of God for our life. It can also blind and hide who we really are, our identity, because we're so identifying with everything's around us and how we're responding to everything. Uh, maybe the trauma that's happened in our lives, the sins that we've committed, maybe the current things that we're involved in that's ungodly. 
but it, it begins to uh, cause us to identify with all of that and we don't see who we really are. Jesus comes in and he starts to uh, exposed to Gideon, uh, really his calling on his life and who he really was. And, and I think that speaks volumes because only your creator can really tell you who you are. Uh, the one that created you, the one that formed you in your mother's womb, the one that, that knits you together, he's the only one that can actually identify you because he's the one to put all the things that are within you. And that's what God, that's what Jesus did for Gideon that day. He began to speak t- to who he was, his identity, and called him uh, the mighty man of God that he was really destined to be. In Gideon was actually the ability to lead a, a, an army of men to conquer uh, a nation that had been oppressing them. That was in Gideon. In Gideon was leadership. In Gideon was the ability to be a judge over Israel for years. I mean, that was all in him. But again, that current condition that Gideon was in, it, it, it was hiding him from seeing his identity and even his God-given purpose. And I, and I know that God, uh, you know, through the new birth has done some major things in our lives. So you can look at Ephesians 2.10. It says that we are God's handiwork. We're his workmanship. We're born anew. This is who we are. We are sons of God, daughters of God. We're born of God. Uh, we're his workmanship. Uh, we're, we're not junk. Uh, we're, not, uh, we're not the sin uh, that maybe we found ourselves in or the habits that we continuously do. We're not our past. If you've been born again, you are who God says you are. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And that's really what the Word does for us. The Word gives us revelation when we get into it. The Holy Spirit brings that revelation to us through the Word as we read it, as we study it, as we pray to help identify or clarify really our identity and helps us to identify who we really are. That's what God did for Gideon. He did that for him. But then Jesus went even farther and he began to clarify his purpose because only your creator can really clarify that. He knows who you are. He knows what he put in you, but he also knows why he put the things in you. He put it in you to carry out a purpose, but also there's a unique purpose. Every one of us has a God purpose, a a, a unique design to fulfill a unique purpose in life. You might not be doing podcasts like I do or uh, preaching on a Sunday or on a Wednesday or leading a staff of people or leading a church. That might not be your purpose. Your purpose may be to run a business. Your purpose may be to be a homemaker. Your purpose may be to be a teacher in a school. Or I mean, there's a plethora of things that could you could be doing in life that God wants you in that, that could be your purpose. But whatever it is, know this to be true, that that God equips you for it, but also he'll help clarify you in your purpose. He doesn't want to leave you in the dark so that you're struggling with this. That's what he did with Gideon. He began to speak to him then not only about who he was, but about what he was called to do, which was his purpose. He said, you're going to go in your might and and the power that you don't even realize you have, and you're going to go and bring salvation to the people of Israel, and you're going to destroy the enemy. And he was speaking about something that probably was just baffling Gideon. I, I could just, I would just like to have been just hiding, uh, maybe a fly that was buzzing around or just hiding behind a bush somewhere. If I could go back there and just watch Gideon's face and just see what was happening with Gideon. I mean, he probably had, you know, so many different facial expressions. It was probably a little bit more detailed than what we're having in the scriptures because many times we get a synopsis of what's happening. And, uh, you know, who knows all that Gideon was saying to Jesus, the angel of the Lord at that time, giving those excuses about how he couldn't do this. But God began to speak about his purpose. And that's what God does with us. Again, He, we, we've been born again, not by our good works. We're born again by the grace of God because we've accessed the, because we've, we've used faith to access grace and we've humbled ourselves to receive it. But then God does birth us into his family and, 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 and recreate us so that we can do good work, so that we can fulfill a divine purpose. And he speaks to us all through the scriptures. And that's what he did, again, for Gideon. He gave him this, this God assignment to go and destroy Baal and the altar of Baal and the Asherah pole and, uh, that was in his father's house. Uh, and so, you know, Gideon obeyed. He did it. He got a group of men together. And they went and destroyed it at nighttime, not during the day, but he still did it. It was quite a feat that he did. He, he really risked his life. He definitely risked his reputation and his, and his father's reputation with the rest of the people of Israel. But when he did that, it really activated 
his divine purpose because the gifts, the graces of God began to start operating as he started to step out. And that just speaks to me that God will start helping us not only identify who we are by giving us revelation of our identity in Christ, and not only just telling us about our purpose, but then God will give us assignments. And sometimes that assignment might even seem just crazy or different than what we thought. But as we get into something, it actually starts awakening the gifts that are within us. It starts awakening the calling that's within us. And so I, I just want to leave that with you today as, as we're coming to a close of this podcast. Uh, allow God to speak to you about who you are. Go back to the scriptures. Begin to seek out scriptures that tell you who you are in Christ. There's a lot of in Christ or in him scriptures specifically they would be found in uh, the letters to the churches through the Apostle Paul, even in Peter, Peter's writings and different ones. But it, it will help you identify or, or give you your identity in Christ Jesus. But then as well, allow God to begin to speak to you about your purpose. And, and I believe that, that as you pray and seek God and worship God, you know, get to church you know, uh, get involved in one of our teams, you know, go through Grow Track. That's a great way to help you understand that because we actually have one of the sessions that, that deal with that. But then as you're here in, in a part of the community, that helps you to be start identifying some things. God will give you assignments in a church and it may be something that you didn't think you're supposed to do, but you get in that department and all of a sudden things begin to awaken on the inside of you that you didn't realize you had. But, you know, let God clarify that purpose for you. Allow God to speak to you and may, may you be obedient to what he's saying. Don't be reluctant. Be obedient. Even if it feels like it's a risk, even if you feel like you're putting yourself out there on the line, maybe it may risk some embarrassment. Maybe it may risk even feeling like failure. But you know what? Any, anybody that did anything great is always going to risk those things. So, you know, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid to fail and don't be afraid of what people are going to think of you because, you know, you, you can't control that. Only, only person you can control uh, about who thinks about you is you. So <laughs> you control your thoughts. You know God's thinking good thoughts about you. You think the right thoughts, and you just got to leave everything, everybody else to themselves and do what God's called you to do. One way that, that you can activate your purpose, and I brought this today with me on the set, is that we're, we're coming up to Easter, and Easter is just a week and a half away. A week and a half, guys. I cannot believe it. <laughs> 2023. And now we're at Easter. This is crazy. It's like we are flying into this year. So on, on Sunday, we did uh, cast vision for this challenge that we want to do for Easter. We do it about every big day. We've been bringing it back here this last year, over the last 12 months. And, and it starts with the Seek and Save card. It looks like this. And, um, you know, if, if you're living in another area outside of our church, I challenge you to do it to the church you go to. Uh, but especially if you're in our area, you go to our church, get the Seek and Save card on a Sunday, write your name on the front of it, and then write one to three people's names on here that are lost, that are unchurched, that are uh, wandering out there in life, that need to get either saved or come back to God or get plugged into a local church. Write their names down on here. And don't just write them down there just to write them down. You write them down for the purpose of two purposes. Number one, you want to pray for them. So take time daily to pray for their salvation, their restoration, to get planted in a local church. Allow God to pray through you, to intercede through you for them. Do that daily and believe in God that they'll also uh, come on Easter Sunday uh, to one of our three services, which is at 9, 10, 30, and 12. So make sure that you get there for that yourself, but invite them to come to one of those services. I had somebody the other day tell me, well, I'm going to be serving all three services, so maybe I can't invite somebody. That doesn't mean you can't invite them. Just let them know, hey, I'm going to be serving, but I'd love for you to come and let me know what service you're going to be at, and I'll try to get down there and say hi to your, or let, you know, kind of get them situated. So, you know, don't, don't let your serving stop you from doing this. And then this is the second thing you want to do is that you want to take one of these. I have three of them here in my hand because of three people that I've got that I'm going to be praying for and passing this out to. But take one of these invites and hand them out to one of the people that you're, that you're going to be praying for and invite this. It's a simple invite. And it has our Easter uh, times on here. It has a QR code on here. They can see more from our website, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all on this card. And you can hand it to them. That's that simple. Just say, be my guest at our Easter service this coming Easter, which is April the 9th. Again, it's at 9, 10, 30, 
and 12. So let that be a challenge for you. Maybe that'll waken up some purposes in you that you didn't even know about as you just begin to reach out to people and go beyond yourself. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you for being a part. Again, it's every Wednesday at noon. Also, again, make sure you're getting to church this coming Sunday. We're going to be on part number four of Connect Four, and we're going to be talking about making a difference. So you don't want to miss that. Bring a friend with you, and hopefully we'll get to see you there. Thank you.